Everybody's motivated by ego. I have rules that I break a lot. I'm not crazy, you're crazy. I can't be worried about like nobody likes you. I might watch this back and be like, that happened? This is such an inconvenient time to be having a full stroke. So this interview with Anna Kendrick caught me a little off guard. Get mad, get angry, like, you know, just harness that side of yourself. And I was like, okay. So like I had to put myself in this zone where I was like standing like a guy and I was like imagining that I had a and I was like in a hot tub surrounded by like is and you figure surely this is a bit then you watch another interview i was checking into a hotel somebody came out and said oh do you need help with your bags i thought they were doing a bit <laughs> so um i went oh i've been traveling all day i have no idea <laughs> and another i picture myself with like flowing blonde hair and a tan toned body but unfortunately that's not the reality and you start to realize something i always feel weird trying to sell it because it's like i wrote it it's so good it's so yeah. funny I'm so talented. Yeah. <laughs> She's 100% serious. I look a mess all the time. I will just do anything to have this conversation stop. Oh my god, I've tricked people into thinking I have a good personality. I will kill you where you stand. Are you close with your brother? I'm like, yeah, we're really close. We talk like twice a year. I am that bitch, so... You're the first guest who's come out after we're done with you. I just try to be funny. Like, that's the idea. You have this highly competitive industry, right? An industry so painfully unstable. There was part of me that kept thinking like, I'm gonna get fired, or they're gonna cut the part way down. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just happy to be here. That your work is limited to the duration of whatever project or film you're fortunate enough to get a role on. As a result, you have a standard of behavior you're never supposed to deviate from unless on screen. If I have kids, it's just another kid that your kid's gonna have to fight when the water wars come. There have been countless instances where, be it Hollywood or not, a single captured moment can derail an entire career. Just do it! And then we're going to Washington DC to take back the White House! It makes it all the more intimidating to be anything but what the industry wants. It's not authentic like me. But yet, even if you manage to avoid all of this, what you discover is that there's still one more major obstacle. Growing up, did you have a lot of like famous uncles and aunts and- You can have the talent, but it's often hard to stand out when your competition was born with one foot already in the door. Do I not have the look? But what if you didn't grow up with the guidance of an A-list relative? What if you began your journey within the average American family, despite no real connections and after a six hour bus ride? And basically that would mean my parents would have to drive me like five hours to New York for like one audition and then come home, which was just not sustainable. You know, they both yeah. worked full time. My brother was like 14 and they were like, you guys can get on a Greyhound bus and go to New York City and come back and you'll be fine. Your talents would shine enough to land you a spot on Broadway. It was a role that turned the drama world on its head. Hi, Anna Kendrick. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. This experience would then help the transition into big screen musical comedy with the 2003 debut film Camp. She's I'm ready. And the damn show must go on. This film, though not exactly a ticket to superstardom, would provide the padding necessary for a softer landing within the industry. I consider myself to be a triple threat, and triple threat means um, you're singer, dancer, actress. Despite not yet being the superstar lead we recognize today, Anna Kendrick was still very much Anna Kendrick. Just waiting to be judged. I mean, it's certainly not American Idol, Simon Cowell, you know, gonna tell you that you are awful. Thank you very much. Next is just as bad. There's there's this unspoken rule in Hollywood where, unless you've made it, you aren't supposed to speak ill of the process. Unless there's a collective effort like a writer's strike, where you can disappear within the crowd, being outspoken could often lead to missed opportunities, or even worse, a poor reputation. While she isn't exactly shattering the glass ceiling in these early interviews, there is a vulnerability here. Rehearsing for 13 and a half hours, I think was our big long day. There was definitely the moment of, I want to go home, I miss my friends, I just want to sleep in my own bed. A willingness to convey her honest opinions absent the fear of criticism. In New York, they're like, I've lived here for 30 years, get the off my street. <laughs> Where some would see unfiltered rambling and perhaps even a bit of naivety. I got an email saying, hey, do you want to meet the president? Naturally, I said, of what? And they were like, the country, you idiot. Others would find a refreshing honesty. I shake his hand and he says, I hope I didn't embarrass you earlier. And I was like, yeah, you're such an ass. 
one not tailored by a family that has their roots already deeply planted. She was average. The Toronto premiere. You literally couldn't afford shoes. Oh, yeah. Somewhat quirky, yet incredibly down to earth. These earrings are so expensive. They have actual real diamonds in them. And I found that just like so thrilling. This of course would lead to the inevitable girl next door typecast with roles in 2007's Rocket Science. Ferreting out the debating talent from the masses and the breakout supporting role in the box office mega hit that is the Twilight series. But now that we've grown up, they want a serious answer. With this success came a lot more attention. With the attention came awareness of her talents. It's even bigger than last year, it's even louder, it's kind of intimidating. Just because she was unfiltered and seemingly unwilling to conform to industry standards doesn't mean she wasn't an expert at her craft. Here are the nominees for best performance by an actress in a supporting role. The Academy would notice it as well. And Kendrick in Up in the Air with an Oscar nomination for her performance as Natalie Keener in Up in the Air. There was a lot of goofing around and there were definitely days where I felt like he was the teenager and I was the mom. Isn't 10 million just a number? Pi is just a number. Well, we all need a hobby. And a more down-to-earth portrayal as Janet in End of Watch. I can't believe that I stayed over. But then came a role that would come a few years after the release of the High School Musical franchise and during the peak of the mega-hit TV series Glee. I got my ticket for the long way round. Amidst the booming musical era of the mid-2000s, she'd lead a star-studded cast with the role of Becca in Pitch Perfect. Was it as much fun to shoot as it was to watch? No. I, I hate, hate her so much. I hate you too. <laughs> That's so weird. Anna Kendrick had blown the hinges off of whatever barriers Hollywood had set for her. She was now in the midst of superstardom. An Academy Award-nominated actress you know from Up in the Air and the Pitch Perfect movies, please welcome back to The Late Show, Anna Kendrick. Please welcome Anna Kendrick. So with this stable, consistent work and industry awareness, you'd think she'd be far more reserved. So wonderful to finally be recognized for being so physically perfect. But not only is that not the case, it's almost the opposite. I think we've both been in situations where we're like, this is gonna be great, and then after like a month of working with them, you're like, I gotta kiss this, oh. here we go. Yeah, that can happen. This unpolished, candid honesty has helped her build quite the fan base over the years, but it wasn't limited to interviews. You're extremely popular on Twitter. Back when Twitter was still Twitter, Anna Kendrick with her self-deprecating and relatable nature could tweet alongside the established posters of that era. I have done a handful of drunk tweets and so far people haven't been able to tell the difference. I say stuff I wouldn't say to somebody's face, but like on Twitter and it's like this release. Even better was her uncanny ability to turn troll comments into viral content. In one instance, when an individual implied that TMZ had access to her private content, she'd reply by saying, finally, I've been submitting it to them for months. But there's a reason this works so well. You should have to do a couple of silly posts or funny posts for every like self-promotional. You can't just be like out there promoting your own thing all the time because you're ruining it for everybody. Social media has become the only means of celebrity interaction for most of the general public. A-listers used to have an aura of mystery given that they'd spend most of their time outside of the public eye, unless of course in the frame of the paparazzi. All around, there was a deeper yearning for more organic engagement. Instagram is the place I go to be like, I'm so fabulous and wonderful, and Twitter's like, I'm a mess. I'm really sorry. Anna Kendrick's rise would arrive alongside this transition of interest. Perhaps she would even help change the standard. The very rare people in the world who have always felt like they fit in have become really boring and insufferable people. It broke the norm of Hollywood's often polished and guarded demeanor. She was willing and able to acknowledge her own quirks, her own flaws. I barely have friends because all my friends are the ones who are okay with the fact that sometimes you don't see your friends. <laughs> this industry is full of carefully curated images. There's a professional guidance that's used to help mold marketable stars. While she's most certainly marketable, she isn't molded. So you figure maybe there's a chance to make it in this industry without forgetting who you are in the process. Um, Does anybody want to ask Anna Kendrick a question? See, that's aggro. That's why they don't like you. <laughs> no, I think that was authoritative. Anna Kendrick is proof of that. Proof that vulnerability and success can go hand in hand. How are you normal? Um, are you normal? Well, <laughs> the lower the expectations are of me and the more I can present myself as like someone who is still a work in progress, the easier time I have like in most of my day-to-day -day activities. She isn't changing. She's certainly not conforming. To put it simply, she isn't pretending.